Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're talking all about med search. So how to study for medical surgical nursing. This class is normally a two part class, right? You have your first class and then you have part two or you have what they call advanced med search. And so this is a very important class that you will take in nursing school and it covers a lot of information. In med search, we discuss the disease process, how it affects the body, and what the nurse does about it. So this video is all about my study tips on how to help you be successful in this class. So let's get into it. So the first tip is you gotta read the book. But when you read the book, don't read it word for word because these books are thousands of pages long. One chapter could be a hundred pages and you could be doing four chapters in a week, right? So that's a lot. So you do want to read the book, you want to know the material, but don't read it word for word. Look for the main ideas, the main concepts, and read that. Join a study group. This is going to be helpful really in any class you take in school, but joining a study group is going to be a big help in med surge just because there is so much content and you can kind of bounce ideas off each other, you can quiz each other, maybe they understood something differently than you understood it, or maybe they took different notes than you took and then you guys can share. So joining a study group is going to be a big help. Use flashcards for this class because it is going to be a lot of information and flashcards are a great way to help you study. So you can either do the ones, you know, by hand, write them down, or you can use online flashcard tools. Utilize practice questions from the book. So each chapter usually has practice questions and CLEX style practice questions at the end. So I definitely recommend using that. If you go to a school that uses ATI, read the ATI book and do the practice questions at the end of each chapter in that book as well. Because that's going to help you kind of get into that NCLEX style like mind frame when answering questions on your exams. Connect the dots. This is huge. So like I said before, it's a lot of information. And yeah, can you just memorize it all? Yes. Is that the best thing to do? No. You want to connect the dots because it's going to make more sense that way. So connect dots from the causes of the illness, the pathophysiology, so how the illness affects the body, the signs and symptoms that the patient will have, important labs related, complications that can arise, and the nursing interventions. So you want to connect all of these. So if you understand the causative agent and how it affects the body, right? How it affects um, the normal process of the body and changes it, then you'll understand like, okay, that's why the patient is having these signs and symptoms because this is what's happening in the body. And that's what's gonna affect our lab values, make them go up or down. Complications can arise because we understand the pathophysiology, right? So the complications will make more sense. And then what's the nurse gonna do about it? If you understand these signs and symptoms, you're gonna understand the need for the nursing interventions. So very important that we don't just try to memorize all this information, but you actually want to understand it. You want to connect the dots between the cause, the patho, the signs, the labs, the nursing interventions, all that stuff. You want to be able to connect those dots because it's going to make a lot more sense and you're going to remember it better. Know your A and P, okay? So anatomy, physiology, that's a class that was a prereq to this class, right? And that was for a reason. In this class, you learn about like the normal functioning of the body. In med surge, you learn about what goes wrong, right? So if you don't understand how the body works normally when it's healthy, you're gonna have a harder time understanding the diseased body, right? So. Know your A and P. Review it. If you don't understand it, go back to your A and P and review it. You want to make use of the study guide book that comes with your textbook. The majority of textbooks these days, at least for med surge, come with like an accompanying study guide. And sometimes your teachers will say like, yeah, we're going to have homework from that, so you need to turn it in. And then some will say, don't bother buying it. You don't need to worry about it for this class. But I think it's a good aid. It's just more practice and it's just something to help you study. So I definitely recommend using the study guide book if your textbook comes with it. And then how long should you study? So your study time per week 
is equal to your credit hours times two. So let's say your med surge class is a three credit hour class, okay? So three times two is six. So you should be studying for this class six hours a week. So that study time equals credit hours times two. So that's how much studying you need to do for this class. Let's talk about a couple more tips. Just a few more tips. So you want to study a little bit every day. You don't want to cram, okay? You're not going to remember it or understand it if you try to cram the information, you know, two days before the test. So study a little bit every day. Break up those six hours or eight hours or however many hours based on your credit hours and break them up throughout the week. Study a little bit every day. Understanding farm. So just like you need to understand, you know, the normal A and P for this class, it's a good idea to understand pharmacology. Now, this isn't a farm class, right? We're not going to be solely focusing on medications in this class, but they are going to come up and you are going to need to know like the main meds for certain illnesses, especially in the clinical component of this course. So having a good understanding of the pharmacology and the main meds that you're going to be dealing with is going to be a big help. No normal lab values. Now this is the kind of thing that you just need to like straight up memorize, okay? So knowing the normal lab values for common things like your CBC. So a normal H and H, hemoglobin hematocrit, a normal white blood cell count, a normal platelet count, and then your electrolytes, okay? Potassium, magnesium, etc. Knowing normal lab values for that sort of thing is going to help you in clinical, right, when you're taking care of your patients and you see their labs, but also on exams when you get that sort of information and you need to figure out like, okay, what's going on, right? So knowing the normal lab values is going to help too. Focus on nursing interventions. You are in nursing school, right? You're going to become a nurse, not a doctor. Is it important to know the certain like surgeries and procedures and things that the doctors might do? Yes, right? You have to have a base understanding of that sort of thing, but your primary focus is going to be on what is the nurse going to do for this patient who has this illness, okay? And if you've watched any of my videos, I kind of talk about that. I'll say, these are the things, these are the diagnostic tests that doctor might order or doctor might do, or these are the surgeries, and we need to know what they are, but we don't need to be an expert in those things. Our goal here is to be an expert in the nursing interventions because you're going to be a nurse, right? So this next one, I'm just saying as an instructor, okay? Go to class, okay? Don't be absent from class. Don't be tardy from class. Pay attention during class. Don't be on your phone or on your computer or playing games. And take notes. In class, teachers usually will say things like, oh, this is important, or you should put a star next to this, or, you know, letting you know, giving you hints about things that are important are going to be on the exam. So if you don't go to class, pay attention, or take notes, how are you going to know about that kind of stuff, right? So I know that's basic for any class, but I really wanted to put that on here. It's very important that you go to class and pay attention. Use Maslow's. So in your fundamentals class, you probably learned Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You're going to continue to use this information in all of your future classes, especially med search, because we're going to be dealing with the disease process and how it affects the body. So what are our priorities going to be for that patient? In order to figure that out, remember Maslow's. And then other things you can do, watch YouTube videos, right? You have all of these resources at your disposal and make concept maps. Some students really benefit from the use of concept maps. So before when I was talking about like connecting the dots, right, between like the signs and symptoms and the pathophysiology and all of that, concept maps are going to help you do that. So this is a nice visual graphic representation of that stuff and it can help you connect the dots between concepts. So that was my video on how to study for med surge. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.